All right, we're here with uh, uh, Barbara Miles with Miles and Miles. Uh, how's the weekend going? The weekend is wonderful. The crowd is great. <coughs> and uh, you've had lots of people at the booth. You're in a great location. Uh, we love it here. I've been here about six, seven years now. Yeah. Wonderful. I won't change. Mostly what you have is jewelry, but it looks like you have a collection of a, a lot of things. You have a lot of different things. We have a lot of different things. It's in different price ranges. We like to have a little something for everyone, including our named pieces like Miss Marie, <laughs> Marie uh, Lincoln, Yazi, Mary Marie. And do you know the stone there in the center? The stone is, I'm not quite sure of the, uh, of the mine, but the stone is really, really high end and gem quality. The silver work is beautiful. Say the name of the artist again. Uh, it's uh, Mary Marie. Mary Marie. And you mentioned the piece, that you're, the piece that you're wearing is also quite wonderful as well. This is an older piece. I don't know who did the piece, but it's all natural turquoise. And I'm, I have an interested buyer, but I just love it so much, I just don't want to let it go. <laughs> That's a good problem to have. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I hope the rest of the weekend goes well. All right. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, we're here with Don Siegel with Chapita Trading, and uh, Don, how's the weekend going so far? Well, we've had a great weekend. We have brand new collectors coming in. We have veteran collectors coming in, and it's it's been great. And what do you think? Uh, what are people asking about? What do you, do you see a trend here? What are people interested in? I think people are interested in good quality, high uh, value collectibles. There's a lot of material on the market today, so it's important that collectors are educated and that they're looking for um, high quality pieces. Now you have some really interesting pieces here today. Can we talk about the moccasins? Sure, let's go over and take a look at these Cheyenne high top moccasins. So these are Northern Cheyenne, which are quite rare. There were not a lot of Northern Cheyenne people and therefore there were not a lot of pieces that survived. These date to about 1870 and 1880. And you have a wonderful mix of moccasins and leggings with incredible bead colors. And you also have these green military stripes that help designate the ranking in the societies of the warriors. And these were worn by women with their husband's military stripes. Wow. That's exceptional. And I understand you also have a, a tobacco bag that's quite impressive as well. Yeah, let's go take a look at this very early tobacco bag. This is a tobacco bag that's called the delegation bag. And the delegation bags were used by the chiefs who went to Washington in the period to meet with the president. And what's unique about this is we have incredible quill work that has great condition and beadwork. So we have a quill work panel, we have a beadwork panel, great fringe, great uh, length, very, very narrow. You can see where the individual held it by their hands. Pieces of this ilk are extremely rare, very hard to find, usually only available in museums. So we're excited to have something like this available. Wow. Well, thank you for your time today and enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks so much. Thanks for stopping by. All right, so I'm here with Wilson Capron and uh, Scott Hardy with the TCAA. Uh, guys, uh, welcome to the show. I, it seems like it's been a great weekend. What have you noticed? Well, the show gets better every year. The yep. auction was great. TCA loves to come here because it's the people that uh, are in our cultural sphere, interested in the, the West. We get to showcase who we are, and, and every year we hold a, an emerging artist competition here. This year it was Rawhide Braiders, so we introduce young people into this world also. So it's a fun show every every year. We've been here uh, 17 years, 15 years. I'm going to help you uh, plug uh, your book here. Uh, oh. Tell us about your book. This has uh, been a long time coming, right? This book is 20 years of, of the Traditional Cowboy Arts Association. It's, a, it's an excellent book, coffee table book, as you can see. And, it, and it, every year that a member came in, they're introduced that year in their work. So there's over, it represents 20 years of the TCA and over 700 one-of-a-kind pieces. Not all 700 are in here, but from here you can go find all of them. Will you flip through, flip through it for a second there? I'll let Wilson. <laughs> so the way it's laid out is in chronological order. Um, 
uh, uh, by five year increments. So this is kind of an introduction to the way things go. And then you can see chapter one is 1999 to 2003. So it talks a little bit about that five year span. And then it starts introducing the founding members of our group, um, first 12 and, and some of their works from that first year. And then as it goes along, each member each year will have one of their pieces from the show of each year as it goes along. So it's a good way for, for folks to, to meet the makers and, and the artists to who they are and then, and then some of their work. And it's kind of fun to see the progression of our work. Um, our organization is built on education. We not only educate our peers, but we're all the time educating ourselves and trying to perpetuate the future of the West and, and, and the art that we create. So you can see a big change over the last 20 years of our own talents as we've grown and educated ourselves of what's going on. So it's just a real good way for people to understand who we are and what we're doing. And what is it that you guys are working on next? What's big? What's the next big event? Well, so our next next event will be um, October 5th, 4th and 5th in Oklahoma City at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. And, uh, that's our annual show. And, uh, we, we spend a, a, a great portion of our year creating the three best things we've ever made in our entire life. We'll put there at that show each and every year. Well, thanks for chatting, guys, and thanks uh, for everything. And good luck uh, as you build build your pieces for uh, October. Thank thanks, you, sir. Man. Thanks, sir. <laughs> All right, so we're here with Graham uh, Quisenberry, who's the Emerging Artist winner this year and last year for the TCAA uh, show here at, uh, at Brian LaBelle's Old West Show and Events. Uh, Graham, tell me about the piece that you're holding there. This was your winning piece, right? Yeah, this was it. Um, it's just 16 plat cuff, 32 plat centerpiece, and calf rawhide buttons, and this piece I tried to do to challenge what I could do. Now, I've seen uh, some of the artists work in this. Could you describe how it is you get those real fine uh, pieces of leather that you, you braid into that? Uh, I take it every, or every step from my I'll be skinning the calf to preparing the rawhide and I have some tools that help me cut the strings and bevel the strings and get everything uniform on width, of, width and thickness. It's incredible. And then as you're, as you're making it, what sort of like, what, <laughs> how do you keep it so straight, so uniform and so tight? What's the secret there? Lots and lots of practice. <laughs> Just good foundations and lots and lots of practice. Well, perfect. Thanks so much for your time today. All right, so we're here with Alan Wilkinson with Thunderbird Hats. And uh, if you happen to see these here at Brian LaBelle, they are quite striking. They look historic, but they're not. They're aged to look that way, and others are made to look brand new. But they all come from Alan, who's a, a fantastic hat maker. Uh, Alan, tell us a little bit about your process and how, how you create these just works of art. Well, I actually uh, kind of let the hats decide what they want to be. I just start working with them and... Uh... The ones that are hardest to make are the ones that are have the most character. It's a step-by-step -step process to make them look authentically worn. And some of them, like the one I'm wearing, is, is an antique concho. This is a child's concho belt from the 1920s. So it's just a whole gamut of different styles, shapes. And like I said, it's kind of just like what the, whatever the hat wants to be. Once I do the the styling of the hat, then I decide what kind of a band I want to put on it. So it's a kind of a marriage of, of just looks. Now I want to ask specifically about this hat here behind you, the one that has a, sort of an extreme weather to it. What sort of time period? What, do you have a story behind that hat? I, I want to do my hats like if a guy was working on the line camp and he had a hat band, his hat would be all grungy, he'd go out to the harness pile of scraps and he'd put a hat band on it. So it looks authentic, it looks like somebody wore it forever. But if this hat was actually worn forever, you wouldn't put your head in because it'd be so nasty inside. But being a new hat, you don't have that problem. Wow. But it, you get the look without the, the crud. <laughs> Where are you based out of? Santa Fe, New Mexico. Excellent. Okay. So how's the weekend going? Oh, it's great. I love this show. We've yeah. been doing it for 24, 5, or 8 years, however many years it is now. 
and lots of people at your booth, good attendance? Yeah, it was pretty decent, you know. Uh, everybody seemed to love being here and uh, sold a nice dress first right out of the box. It was great. And what's great about your booth is just the variety of materials. I mean, really, jewelry, all kinds of artifacts. Yeah, well, you know, Cowboys and Indians is a cooperative, and so um, we have multiple dealers uh, in the shop, but it's in the booth here, we have three different dealers, yeah. so you get a different perspective with each of them, and, you know, we all have our own eye for picking. Well, tell us the about names. this new line that you have here. Uh, well, I've been doing uh, these trips to Japan for about five years and introducing Native American jewelry to the Japanese market and uh, offering authentic Native American as opposed to, you know, Asian knockoffs. And uh, so we've done this line of um, charm bracelets and necklaces and the design of the elements are Native American uh, elements of strength and power and inspiration. And uh, so this is what we call the long hammer. And uh, it's a movable part charm. And, uh, it's made by Fritz Toledo for us, and the chains are Lawrence Yazi. So uh, this is a new line we'll be introducing to the Japanese in two weeks in Los Angeles at Inspiration LA. Excellent. Well, thank you today. Yeah, thank you. All right, sir. So um, your materials here are really quite stunning. What, uh, when, when shopping for these items, what, what are you looking for? What questions should people be asking about these materials? I, I only buy antique Winchesters and Colts made before 1899. So that's why I like this old stuff. It's yeah. so much history and it looks so good. And so, like, when it comes to Winchesters and Colts, what are, like, the prime years? Oh, uh, 1860 to, to uh, 1890 are the prime years, Yeah, I think. And what makes those guns distinct? Well, they were the first ones made. The Henry Rifles were made the very first, and then it went to Winchester. In the old days, the Henry Rifle had 15 rounds, and everybody else had one. So, imagine who had superiority when they had a Henry Rifle to have one here, too. Oh, nice. And uh, these guns all still work? Or are they mostly just for show? Or mostly for show, but you could fire a few of the Winchesters. They never wear out. Yeah. They're always good. What do you think is the highlight of what you have here today? Oh, the Henry rifle by far. Yeah. That's a 1862 Civil War uh, gun, and uh, even has the Civil War inspector's initials on it. Oh wow! Could you show me where that is? Sure. It's right along the side here. George C. Carlson. Imprinted right there. Civil War inspector. It's like they're inlaid stones. They're cut and set in there. Mosaic. So the Zuni Indians are the ones that are known for this. They do the beautiful. And and the other one that you looked at. So do you do you know the obviously the turquoise? Do you know what it is? Yeah, yeah, I just know my trash house. Four buys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, lot 282. Here is the original famous Fort Worth 5. All right, this photograph is probably the most well known American West photograph ever. All right, we're going to sell it to you right here. All right, of the wild bunch. I'm going to be third of the end. So I'm going to get $150,000. $150,000. 850000 I'm going to be in now. $150,000. I'm going to get $100,000. $100,000. I'm going to be third of the end. 50, 55,000. 50 there, 55,000. $55,000. Come with me. Oh, we're going to go that way. Hey, 25. You got 25. Thank you. 27, 5. And now 30,000. Yep. Now 35,000. 37, yep. 5. And now 40,000. 42, yep. 5. 45,000. 47, yep. 5. 50,000. 55,000. Yep. 60,000. 65,000. Yep. 60, 70,000. 75,000. Yep. 80,000. 85,000. Yep. Now 90,000. 95,000. Now 95,000. 90 bit. 95,000. Absentees out. I got 90. 95,000. Pay 95,000 dollars. Maybe 95,000. Now. Yes, 90, yes, 5, yes, 000, yes, yes. 100,000. 110,000. 110,000. 110,000. Sir. 110,000. 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110,
hundred and late, late. Uh, hundred and ten right behind you. Give me hundred and ten thousand on the aisle. One hundred and ten thousand. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Right there. Eight hundred and ten thousand dollars. Hundred, hundred and ten. One hundred and ten thousand. One hundred and ten thousand. Let it be no ten. I got a hundred thousand bid. One hundred and ten thousand. One hundred and ten thousand. Let it be now. Last chance, fair warning. Hundred thousand. Hundred and ten thousand. Let it be tonight. Going to Texas. Sold it. Jake Otter. Hundred thousand dollars. Hired by a hundred. All right, thank you guys. Lotter 283. Hey, if anybody's, if anybody did record that, why don't you text that video to me? That's kind of fun. Uh, next one up here.